Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. And today we are diving back into one of my favorite Star Wars things ever, The Mandalorian, with a closer examination of Moff Gideon's flagship. And I know what you might be thinking, especially if you haven't watched some of my other videos detailing some of the smaller things in The Mandalorian. Why would we want to look at Moff Gideon's flagship? Isn't it just a normal Architens class cruiser or an Imperial Command cruiser like in Star Wars Rebels or The Clone Wars? Well, no, it's not in fact. We knew from the very first shot of Gideon's cruiser that it was clearly not a normal Architens because the rear shot of the engines is different. Instead of having three large engines, Gideon's cruiser also has four smaller auxiliary engines. Why is that? Well, Gideon's cruiser seems to be significantly larger than a standard Architens, which according to official sources comes in at about 350 meters. One indicator of its true size comes in the very first episode that it's featured in as well, where we get a look at the bridge, and it's clearly much larger than a standard Architens bridge, which is really just a series of stations in front of the viewport. As we see in more detail at the end of the season, the bridge on Gideon's cruiser is almost like a small Star Destroyer's. It's expansive, it has secondary workstations, it's just much, much larger. So it's definitely a new ship class. It could be a direct successor to the Architens, maybe in Architens 2, or it could be a sort of of evolution, something like the Venator class Star Destroyer to the Victory. When they track down the location of Gideon's cruiser in episode 7 of season 2, it's labeled as a class 546 cruiser, although that's more than likely just some sort of designator. I'm sure it also has a nice imperial sounding name. So how much larger and perhaps more powerful is Gideon's command cruiser than the standard Architens? Well, we can try to guess based on some clues from the show, although I will say, guessing the the length of Star Wars ships based on the length of other things in the same shot has proved to be pretty problematic in the past, as we know with Home 1 and The Executor. There's a really good thread by Pro Peach, a Reddit user on r slash ma installation. We'll credit and link to that down below, which breaks down one particular scene from the finale, which shows the length discrepancy in an interesting light. If we take the Architens length of 325 meters, its canonical length, we we can see that a Lambda shuttle clearly does not fit between the two front prongs. To get it to fit would require a doubling of the ship's size, although there are some issues with that because it assumes that the proportions remain exactly the same. So yeah, that does indicate that the ship is a lot larger. But there's also the fact that the standard Architens doesn't even have a hangar on the front of the vessel. Moff Gideon's cruiser can launch ties from a hangar between the two front spars, whereas the traditional Architens can only hold fighters in a sort of rack, they're exposed to the outside, then they're launched from the two prongs. As a brief aside, I've got to say, the sort of launch tube on the front of the ship has to be one of my favorite features. But Gideon's cruiser also has two more hangars, one on both the port and starboard side of the ships, which are connected to the same central bay, which is where the dark troopers are seen launching from in Season 2, Episode 6, as they steal Krogu, and also where they return in the finale after being flushed out to space. I I can't tell if that's where Luke docks his X-Wing. To be honest, the hangars from the outside look a little larger than the perspective we get on the screen, but it's most likely the same location. That brings us to probably the most dramatic difference aside from size between the two ships, and that's the fact that Gideon's Architens is clearly meant to be a mobile base for the Dark Trooper project. Now, this reminds me a lot of the Ark Hammer from Star Wars Legends. The Ark Hammer was a seemingly custom, scientific, research, and production vessel which launched dark troopers in legends it was essentially not only a transport ship but the entirety of the dark trooper project now i don't think we'll get the same thing in the mandalorian i doubt gideon's cruiser is the home of the dark troopers but it's certainly meant largely as a deployment vessel that makes the fact that it's now in the hands of the mandalorians a little extra spicy and i'm kind of wondering where that will go in future seasons so aside from at least three hangars the increased size, the expanded bridge, the extra engines, and the class name. What else is different in the 546 cruiser? Well, we don't really know right now. The turbo lasers do look larger and in my opinion more powerful, which is probably appropriate given its larger size, but regarding weapon placement and other smaller details, we don't know the exact specifics as of now and hopefully we get some more information as the visual dictionary is released. All in all though, Gideon's command cruiser is pretty interesting. I think it makes sense that 
that he's not in an Architens, but something more powerful, but also probably geared to research given his role in the Dark Trooper program. But this also does indicate to me that Gideon is not the top of the totem pole. I've long theorized that Gideon will probably be a subordinate to Thrawn, and we do get reference to the last of Gideon's fleet, so I bet you there are larger ships still roaming around the galaxy under an Imperial banner at this point. But guns, that's all I have for you today. Shorter video, hope you enjoy nonetheless. I'm going to play some Star Wars Squadrons. Hope you guys have a good day. As always, be safe and may the Force be with you.